Tom, what is the curse of knowledge and how might someone try to fight this curse in their fundraising? I, I think what we need here is a sound of in fact, we need to cue the spooky music with the echo. <laughs> what is the curse of knowledge? And uh, that came from a book called Made to Stick, which was a bestseller in the business category, for, written by Dan and Chip Heath. Both of them are amazing. You know, the one came out of Stanford or teaches at Stanford, the other came out of Harvard. And they investigate business problems. And the problem they were investigating in this case was why do uh, corporate messages um, penetrate an audience or not penetrate, which is what mostly happens. They mostly don't work. So for instance, they're, you're just throwing money at advertising or public relations or whatever it is you're using to broadcast out and it isn't getting through, right? So what they discovered in their long, this is a book after all, so they, they talked to loads of people. Um, what they discovered was that insiders, so they're insiders and outsiders, insiders tend to suffer from what they labeled the curse of knowledge, which is they know so much, they can't see their product, their service, whatever it is they're trying to sell, uh, objectively the way their target audience does. It, 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 they know too much. They, they can't simplify. They can't bring it back to what is our core benefit? What is the most important thing we have to share with our audience? So is that... If, if we can dig deeper, is that... I, I know you talk a lot about like jargon and how like jargon is like a privileged, exclusive vocabulary and only like a tiny elite can really emotionally understand that jargon because it's, um, as you were saying, it's insider language. Right, an insider has a very different point of view because they are specialists, they, they live in this world all the time. So uh, if a bunch of people are you know, social workers, let's pretend, are talking about um, something like, food insecurity. Well, they've seen food insecurity on a daily basis. They've seen the effects of food insecurity. But when you bring that out to the public, that doesn't have the same emotional resonance because they don't witness this the way the specialists do. So it, 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 it loses its emotional dimension when you transfer this insider language jargon to an outsider communications piece. So the insiders can feel it because they live it every day. But for those of us on the outside, the right. jargon doesn't like strike that same like emotional core. Yeah. And, and, you know, another one that is uh, is popular is at risk, right? Mm -hmm. So an at risk child, what is that? Well, I, I can intellectually understand it. Um, I can kind of figure it out or I know what it means intellectually. But unlike your specialist, I'm not on the front line. So I don't actually encounter a lot of at-risk kids. I don't listen to at-risk kids. I don't smell at-risk kids. It is a very different experience. Great, thank you so much. That really helps. <laughs>